But then my question is about uh, climate change, and I refer uh, Jay and Michelle to the report that was produced by the Climate Commission last year, just before they were sacked, where they said we need to leave 80% of the world's fossil fuels in the ground if we are to avoid dangerous climate change. And just one sentence from one of the authors of that report, Professor Leslie Hughes, she said, in order to achieve that goal of stabilising the climate at two degrees or less, we simply have to leave about 80% of the world's fossil fuel reserves in the ground. We cannot afford to burn them and still have a stable and safe climate. So my question is, do you accept that advice? If you don't accept it, what do you know about climate change that the scientists don't know? And if you do accept that advice, which 80% of South Australia's coal and gas should stay in the ground? Because as far as I've seen, the government has never rejected a fossil fuel project on the grounds of climate change. Well, the first thing to say is that we have extraordinarily ambitious targets in relation to renewable energy. And I don't think anybody could uh, fairly criticise this government for its lack of effort in that regard. We set a target of 20%, we busted it. We've set a target of 33% by 2020, and we're almost hit that. So every target we set, we exceed, and we're now going to set another stretch target uh, for ourselves. So, um, and we have obviously our, our uh, climate uh, advisors, climate change advisors, uh, providing us with a report that we intend to act upon. Uh, but uh, obviously, there are real life considerations about what our transitional fuels, and we know that that gas does emit less carbon pollution. Now, uh, it is an important transitional fuel and uh, it is part of the solution, it's not the long-term solution. Uh, but we are committed, as we are committed to pursuing the solar thermal option, we're supporting a business case there. And uh, in terms of the uh, we have the only manufacturer of solar panels in the nation here in South Australia. And there's a reason that that's happened. It's because we've actually uh, taken a lead on this issue. And we've actually got some other exciting businesses that are setting up. Zen Energy is really on the verge of unlocking the secret of battery technology, which could completely revolutionise our approach to renewable energy. But in the, in the short term, we also uh, have to continue to uh, uh, to promote the, the development of the state. I suspect, though, that we've only touched a fraction of our fossil uh, fuel um, uh, capacity in South Australia. I, I don't know what it would be, but I'm sure it uh, is nothing like 20% uh, of uh, the uh, fossil fuels uh, that exist in uh, South Australia, given our abundant uh, minerality. Thank you. Premier Michelle? Thank you. And I, I think the good news in South Australia uh, is that um, uh, for any future electricity capacity is highly unlikely to come from uh, fossil fuels. The settings are very much in favour of, particularly for wind energy. Uh, so the state through the Greenhouse Gas Emissions Act has got its state targets and I think there's um, support across the parties for those. Uh, and uh, the national electricity market is currently oversupplied. So I think as far as us pulling our weight, um, we're doing really well with um, the installed wind and, and solar energy. And also, can I just add too that the solar th thermal proposal for um, uh, Port Augusta, um, we've been uh, very supportive of that and had an uh, inquiry through the Parliament and that's actually led to a feasibility study which is being looked at. I was reading some comments from uh, the chap from Arena who was sounding very buoyant about it, so uh, I guess you know we'll, we'll wait with anticipation to see what the outcome of that is.